Following Avengers Endgame, the MCU's hero roster is a little bit sparse. You know, with Black Widow jumping off a cliff and Tony Stark sacrificing himself to save the world and everything. Even the dulcet melody of Whitney Houston can't make that any less depressing. But the villain numbers are dwindling as well, and we're eager for any hints of which dastardly evildoers we may encounter in Marvel's Phase 4. Could Spider-Man Far From Home have dropped a major yet subtle hint about one of the most popular Spider-Man villains joining the MCU? Before we swing into our video, you should know that there will be some serious spoilers for Spider-Man Far From Home, so proceed with caution. Even if you're not a connoisseur of the finest Spider-Man lore, we're guessing you knew who Mysterio was leading up to the release of Spider-Man Far From Home. He's one of Spidey's most notorious villains, even though we hadn't had the opportunity to see him on the big screen up until this point. So yeah, nice try Marvel Studios, but we weren't fooled for a moment into thinking Quentin Beck was actually a good guy this time around. Okay, maybe you got us with the Nick Fury and Maria Hill were secretly scrolls the whole time thing, but let us just have this minor victory, okay? While we were hoping Far From Home would be the start of a long, beautiful, and adversarial relationship between Spider-Man and Mysterio, it certainly looks like Mysterio isn't going to make it into Phase 4 of Marvel movies. That means we're going to need a new villain, and we mean one besides J. Jonah Jameson, who we fully expect to see pounding his desk demanding pictures of Spider-Man and smoking a cigar in the near future. We all knew Mysterio was going to be the primary villain of Far From Home, but many fans wondered if his arrival would lead to additional villains joining the MCU. Like the insidious Sinister Six, or the Sinister Seven, or the Sinister Twelve. Seriously, these villains could use a thesaurus. Although he wasn't a founding member, Spider-Man's very first villain, the Chameleon, has been known to link up with various incarnations of the Sinister groups. Could it be possible that he was hiding in plain sight in Far From Home? The Chameleon uses elaborate makeup and costumes to change his appearance, which is how he earned his villainous nickname. But his real name is Dmitry Smerdyukov, and hey, what do you know? There was a suspicious character named Dmitry in Far From Home. Director John Watts refused to confirm or deny whether this Dmitry is the chameleon in typical, frustrating Marvel fashion. But he also didn't say he's definitively not the chameleon. In fact, he noted that anyone who works for Nick Fury certainly has a mysterious past, which is just vague enough to be accurate. On the topic of Dimitri being the chameleon, he said we're not specifically saying that he is, but we're not not saying. Okay, that's officially the most frustratingly vague Marvel comment of all time. But we only mentioned Dimitri the possible chameleon because this is another connection to our guy Kraven the Hunter, whose real name is Sergei Kravenov. You see, the chameleon is the half-brother of the legendary Kraven the Hunter. The two men share the same father, Nikolai Kravenov. But while Sergei was his legitimate heir, Dimitri was the result of an affair. As you can imagine, Dimitri didn't have the easiest childhood and always wanted to impress his brother Sergei by being the best villain he could be. While this unhealthy brotherly dynamic could certainly play out differently in the MCU, we think the chameleon possibly being in Far From Home is yet another hint towards Kraven joining the MCU. As we all know, Spider-Man and all his associated characters belong to Sony and not Disney. That's right, there are some limits to the beloved childhood characters of ours that are owned by this particular conglomerate. In fact, the issue of who owns the rights to Kraven has come up before when Marvel Studios was trying to put together a movie. Black Panther director Ryan Coogler is a huge fan of Kraven the Hunter and wanted to cast him as the villain in his blockbuster movie. But it was pretty much a non-starter since Disney doesn't have the rights to the character. Of course, we all know Eric Killmonger is one of the greatest villains in the entire MCU, and the whole movie turned out great. But that doesn't mean we're giving up hope on seeing Kraven the Hunter on the big screen. After all, let's not forget that the movie rights to Spider-Man himself also technically belong to Sony. And yet he's been swinging around the MCU since Captain America Civil War. Clearly, Sony knows fans want a Kraven movie because they've been teasing their own for years. Not that we've been in anguish over it or anything. In the movie The Amazing Spider-Man 2, a very familiar-looking spear showed up during the ending credits. This was later confirmed to belong to none other than Sergei Kravenov, who was slated to appear in The Amazing Spider-Man 3, if it ever happened. 
Of course, we all know the movie didn't happen, and considering how abysmal the previous two were, maybe we shouldn't be so upset about it. But can you blame us? Not only were we supposed to get Kraven, but the other founding members of the Sinister Six as well. Sony even promised to give Kraven his own movie based on the famous Kraven's Last Hunt storyline, but you won't catch us getting our hopes up no more. Not to be unfair to Sony, who we know is capable of putting out quality Spider-Man related content, but they pretty much have a graveyard of unfinished Spider-Man movies in their backyard. And unlike in Kraven's Last Hunt, these characters tend to stay buried. They're Spider-Man 4, The Amazing Spider-Man 3, the Venom spin-off featuring Topher Grace, the Sinister Six movie, and a movie about Black Cat and Silver Sable. Heck, the whole reason Spider-Man's in the MCU at all at this point is because Sony couldn't put together a decent Spider-Man movie within the date stipulated by their contract with Marvel. We all know Marvel Studios has the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and Sony has the much less dignified sounding Sony Universe of Marvel characters. The the S-U-M-C? The Sunk? The Sunk. Anyway, for quite some time, it was thought that these two universes would never cross over with one another, but now we have the whole multiverse thing which was introduced with Avengers Endgame, and it certainly seems like anything is possible. In fact, there's one final moment of Spider-Man Far From Home that gives us hope we could see Kraven the Hunter in the MCU. Despite getting the girl, poor Peter Parker still didn't get a happy ending, considering he was outed as Spider-Man and framed for crimes committed by Mysterio, so his date with MJ went as poorly as it could have possibly gone. That furious person piling accusations on Spider-Man was none other than famous comic book character J. Jonah Jameson. Pretty much everybody knows who that boy is and how desperately he wants pictures of Spider-Man. Even if you don't read the comic books, you probably recognize him from Sony's original Spider-Man flicks, where he was played by actor J.K. Simmons. In the very first Spider-Man movie back in 2002, it was clear that this was the absolutely perfect casting choice, and everybody else could just give up on ever hoping to portray the character. So while we were thrilled to see him reprise the role in Far From Home, it was absolutely shocking to see a Sony character in the MCU. For quite some time, we've been wondering what's going to happen to Tom Holland's version of Peter Parker after the deal with Sony expires. Will he be forced into the sunk? Will he retire? Or will he remain in the MCU? Up until now, it seemed pretty likely that Sony would want their character back. But seeing J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson gave us hope that Sony and Marvel Studios will continue to collaborate. If they're collaborating on Spider-Man and J. Jonah Jameson, then is it really so crazy to suggest that they could find a way to get Kraven into the MCU? After all, considering Spider-Man Far From Home ended on such a huge cliffhanger, we assume we're going to see the masked web-slinger again sometime soon. It's also possible Kraven could emerge as an enemy of someone besides Spider-Man. Possibly in Black Panther 2, which we know will be released sometime in the near future. In the comic books, Kraven has made way more enemies than just good old Spider-Man. He's managed to anger everyone from Squirrel Girl to Howard the Duck to the Incredible Hulk. Okay, so it's not that hard to make the Hulk angry, but you know what we mean. There are definitely endless opportunities for him to fit into the MCU, either in Phase 4 or beyond. As you've probably gathered by now, Kraven the Hunter likes to hunt. In fact, his favorite activity has taken down new and challenging targets, and his powers mean it's often tough for him to find a suitable challenge. This is why he started hunting Spider-Man in the first place, but Peter Parker isn't the only prey he's gone after. We could definitely see him prowling the streets anywhere from New York City to Wakanda. Kraven also has a connection to another villain many of us have been predicting for quite some time now. In Avengers Endgame, we saw Okoye report on an underwater earthquake off the coast of Wakanda. Although she didn't seem particularly concerned, many fans wondered if this was hinting at the arrival of the legendary Namor the Submariner. He has been a hero and a villain at various times, but let's just say he has a difficult relationship with Wakanda and the people who live there. In the comic books, Namor has a cousin named Aquarian Neptune, who's often called Namora in his honor, as if Aquarian Neptune isn't one of the coolest names of all time already. For a period of time, she's romantically involved with Kraven the Hunter, so if Namor is coming to the MCU, it could mean Kraven isn't far behind.
Well, what do you think about the idea that Kraven the Hunter could be making an appearance in the MCU? Do you think we're on the right track, or is this all just wishful thinking? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section below, and then click on that subscribe button for more videos from us here at CBR. Bye for now!